Okay. Um, so my lab's uh, interested in developing materials that can uh, help prime immune responses against cancer. And we have a lot of work also developing uh, nanomaterials, nanoparticles for targeting vac uh, cancer vaccines and improving their efficacy. But I'm going to show you two other uh, examples of strategies we've been trying to develop. Um, one of the issues that we're particularly acutely aware of is the fact that if I have a T cell crawling into a tumor microenvironment, um, it's facing a whole host of signals, um, both co-opted immune cells and, and signals from the tumor itself that are seeking to suppress uh, active tumor immunity. And there are a variety of strategies that are being attempted to revert that immunosuppression and get the immune response going against tumors. Boy, this angle is difficult. Um, treating with cytokines um, or antibodies that can be immunostimulatory. But of course, the, one of the issues that a lot of these uh, treatments face is that we're uh, either applying these systemically or even if we just administer them locally, they'll rapidly reach the systemic circulation and so you're, you're facing a variety of side effects that come from these very potent uh, immunostimuli. So um, the first uh, strategy I want to tell you about is one where we're trying to control uh, the side effects of immunotherapy by controlling biodistribution. So the concept is illustrated here. The extracellular matrix is actually a quite dense microenvironment for materials to diffuse or convect through and it's been shown that if you use small enough nanoparticles, they can diffuse through the extracellular matrix, but above about 50 nanometers or so, particles remain trapped wherever they're injected, and so uh, for the most part. And so we're uh, per pursuing a strategy where we say, what if we take these therapeutics, instead of giving them in a soluble form, we anchor them to a nanoparticle carrier so that when they're injected, they can reach the local injected site and the draining lymph node, but they don't pr uh, disseminate any further. Um, this could still lead to a systemic anti-tumor immune response if we're priming immune cells at those two sites that could then traffic to other locations. So this can still be a systemic anti-tumor therapy. So I'll, I'll show you how we've uh, uh, gone about trying to illustrate this concept. So the approach we've taken is a very simple one where we anchor um, either immunostimulatory antibodies or recombinant uh, IL-2 as a cytokine both of these activate um, T cells through two different uh, complementary pathways. And so we've linked these to uh, liposomes that are about 150 nanometers in diameter. And um, when these are injected into a tumor site, they nicely permeate throughout the tumor. They also um, reach the draining lymph nodes. So if we look in the proximal draining lymph node, we can see nanoparticle or liposome decorated T cells there, but we don't see them in distal lymph nodes and we don't see them in systemic compartments like the spleen. Um, coincident with that localization, we see a complete elimination of uh, uh, these drugs from the systemic circulation. So if I give a dose of anti-4-1-BB, anti-CD-137 antibody and IL-2 locally in the tumor, it still reaches the systemic circulation quite, to quite high levels, but if it's anchored on a liposome, it never gets there. And that completely changes the, the side effects of this treatment. So if I give soluble anti-CD-137 and IL-2 as a local therapy in the tumor, I still get systemic toxicity leading to about a quarter of the animals uh, in this, uh, this is a mouse experiment where and I should have said we're, we're treating B16F10 melanomas, uh, subcutaneous tumors in mice. And if we treat those with a, an intratumoral injection, we get ser serious toxicity that's completely eliminated if we administer those reagents the same dosages by uh, the liposome anchored drug. So then the question is, does that still retain efficacy? And, and it does. So um, untreated tumors grow out uh, over a period of a couple of weeks. If we um, treat a local tumor on day 9 and day 12 and day 13, here in a two-tumor model where we're injecting one flank and leaving the other flank untreated, we see that we're not only um, completely stopping growth of the treated tumor, but we're also uh, having a significant suppression at the distal site. And that is correlated with changes in the immune composition at the distal tumor where we're uh, getting uh, increased CD8 T cell infiltration both on the tumor we're treating and at the distal site. And we think this is uh, being driven by T cells getting primed in the draining lymph node and also lymphocytes in the tumor site itself being reactivated by the therapy and being able to disseminate to other sites. 
So that's one example. Um, now the second thing I wanted to show you is dealing with another issue, which is the uh, potential paucity of antigen-specific T cells that you have to bring to bear on a tumor. And this is being addressed clinically uh, by approaches such as ad uh, adoptive cell therapy, where you, for example, collect a tumor biopsy, expand tumor autologous tumor reactive T cells in culture, expand those cells to large numbers, 10 to the 9th, 10 to the 10th cells, and then infuse them back into the patient. Um, now, one of the issues that this uh, treatment still faces is immunosuppression in the tumor microenvironment. Those cells can be effectively expanded and put into a, a, an a anti-tumor state, but if they crawl into the tumor and get shut down again, that, that's going to limit your therapy. So we've been looking at, for ways to focus the action of immunosuppressive immunosuppression protective drugs on these transferred T cells that would eliminate side effects and make the dosage of drug you're giving more potent. And so the strategy is to take a drug carrier and link it directly to the surface of the transferred T cell. Now wherever that cell goes in vivo, it's going to carry this dosage of drug with it and a very tiny dose could be used very potently by binding in a sort of engineered autocrine manner back to the carrier T cell. So the chemistry for doing this, we exploit um, endogenous free thiols present on uh, native cell surface proteins and simply have a thiol reactive nanoparticle that links to the cell and then we cap off the groups that remain with polyethylene glycol. And then simply by mixing different ratios of particles and T cells, we can uh, spontaneously decorate them with anywhere from a few, uh, a few dozen particles up to hundreds of particles. And we showed through uh, a series of in vitro studies that if you get the dosing right, you can put about 100, 200 nanometer nanoparticles onto a single T cell and not interfere with cell migration, proliferation, formation of an immunological synapse, killing of targets, and so forth. Interestingly, when these T cells are initially decorated, the particles are distributed over the cell surface. If they start migrating, and my, my videos aren't translating to PC here, so I'll just tell you what they would have shown that the T cells move the particles to the tail or uropod when they're migrating through matrix. So the particles actually get moved out of the way by the T cell. But when they find a tumor cell target, they traffic these particles to the interface as they're anchored on proteins that get moved to the synapse. And so they're localized right there for drug delivery at the uh, immunological synapse as a T cell contacts a target cell. Now in vivo, what we've uh, been able to show is that, uh, and this is an example from a spontaneous uh, prostate tumor model from my colleague John Chen at MIT, where we have tumor reactive T cells that we can transfer to the animals and they'll home to the prostate. If we um, do bioluminescence imaging to track where T cells are going, if we transfer in T cells alone, um, they'll home to the tumor over a period of a couple of days and, and accumulate there and in the lymphoid organs. If we decorate them with nanoparticles, they still get to the tumor equally effectively. But interestingly, if we fluorescently tag the nanoparticle and inject either the nanoparticles alone so that they circulate in the blood or carried by the T cells, and then a few days later take out the prostates and image where the particles have gone, we see that the free particles uh, accumulate in, the, in this tumor model very poorly, but the T cells are able to carry high levels right into that uh, microenvironment. So now for therapeutic efficacy, I'll show you uh, as a last slide one example um, treatment where um, we're treating, a, again, a B16F10 melanoma model um, where we've given a tail vein injection. So we have lung and bone marrow metastases on the, uh, that have established over the course of a week. And we're going to treat these animals with uh, an injection of either um, self antigen specific T cells alone. And those cells will traffic to where the tumor is but after a few days, they'll die out. This is known limitation of T-cell therapy if they're not supported by adjuvant drugs. Um, if we give a single supporting drug injection of a mixture of IL-21 and IL-15 to stimulate the T-cells, um, a single injection actually isn't sufficient to really change this picture. <coughs> but if that same dose of drug is carried by the T-cells themselves, you get a dramatic alteration in the outcome where the T-cells expand massively for several days. They completely eliminate the tumor burden and they establish long-lived central memory uh, populations that continue to persist and circulate in the lymphoid organs to protect against future uh, challenges. So, um, and here is just a quantification of this bioluminescence signal showing you that there's about an 80-fold increase in the proliferation of the T cells that we've transferred into those animals. So this looks like a promising way to take uh, 
a, a given quantity of drug and really change its potency. And um, so I'll stop there. And I think with this short story, the conclusions are pretty evident. And I'd be happy to take a question if David will allow it. <laughs>